Hello and welcome to Hold the Eye Images video podcasting. We're coming to you from our studio in Campbell, California. I'm Bill Henderson. And I'm Brian, Trey Montana. And today we're going to talk about the various types of focusing a camera. There's a lot of different cameras on the market and they have different techniques for focusing. For example, Brian's Leica is a manual focus camera. The Nikon in the last video was autofocus. Canons are autofocus. Fuji's are for the most part autofocus. Panasonic's are autofocus. Sony's are autofocus. But Sony's have one other ability. They have peaking in, in their, in their uh, menu. And peaking is another way of focus. So which one do you prefer? Well, um, focus peaking certainly uh, uh, gives you a lot of information, especially when um, you're old like me and my eyes aren't, aren't quite so good. Um, and that idea where, where uh, when those areas are in focus or the most contrast is achieved, a color pops up. Yeah. So you can Let, see let's exactly. Explain, let's explain what peaking is. Peaking is when you look in your camera and as you adjust the focus ring, you start to see a color, and you can choose that color in the menu. We we choose red on our and on our cameras, and you start to see red. Everything that's red should be in focus. Yeah, there's a red but edge to it. Yeah. But it's not always in focus. <laughs> but it should be in focus. It should be. <laughs> it and should that's be. because in peaking you have levels of peaking, so you can be very precise at low levels of peaking where. You just barely see the red, and that's in focus. Or you can have wider areas of focus, and which you, the camera will tell you a whole lot is in focus. And it doesn't. It sometimes ignores the aperture. Mm -hmm. It's just looking. So if you have a wide open aperture, let's say 1.4, for example, you have a very shallow depth of field, and sometimes peaking will trick you and give you a much greater depth of field. Yeah, I, I find that the peaking in the Leica um, is much more subtle and much more hard to see, but it's much more accurate than it is with the Sony. Really? Because I think the Sony gives me a wider range when I start to see that red. Even when I turn it on, the I guess it's the least sensitive, which means I'm going to see the least amount of red. It still is much, much more and brighter than what I see when I put the electronic viewfinder or I use the LCD on the back and peaking on here. But I find that in some testing that I did with peaking versus manual, it seems to be really, really, really close. And here I see the, because we played around with that one, it, you don't exactly know where it is. You see the beginning and the end, but you've got to pick somewhere in the center. So what we're talking about here again, just to make sure that everybody's not lost, is that as you turn the focus ring to focus your subject, the camera will begin to put red on everything that's in focus. And so you have an idea of what's going to be in focus in your camera. And as I said earlier, you can put it on very lo a low level. You have different levels of peaking you can put on. And at, at a low level of peaking, it will show you just the smallest piece of in focus. For example, if you're shooting at someone's, a portrait of someone, you'll see inside the pupil of their eye, you'll see that the, it becomes red and you know that's in focus. That's one technique to use with manual lenses. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's, Sony actually is an autofocus camera, but we use uh, non-Sony lenses. This particular Sony has a Leica lens on it. And that's where peaking comes in. And one of the things mm -hmm. that, that I've heard over and over again, especially from old photographers, is they don't like the idea of an electronic viewfinder. I mean, they're, they're, they're so used to the optical viewfinders that having an LCD as their viewfinder um, uh, just looks different or it looks weird. But without that LCD, you're not going to get focus peaking. You can't put focus peaking on an optical viewfinder. So one of the advantages of the EVF or electronic viewfinder is you can put focus peaking both in the back of the camera and in the viewfinder itself. That's so, right. you know, there is some, you know, drawbacks of the, the electronic viewfinder, but in this case, I think it's an incredibly helpful focusing aid. I do too. Yeah. So that's one. Uh, focus peaking is, is one technique for manual lenses uh, on these new, really smaller bodies like yeah. Sony. Uh, a second 
uh, is autofocus. Now, everybody loves autofocus, and really, autofocus is only at its best for fast-moving objects it, it, where you don't have time to dial it in because autofocus is totally controlled by the camera unless you set your autofocus on MA. Mm -hmm. And that's MA for Nikon, and Sony ha or Canon has a similar setting where you it will focus and then you can t uh, tweak the focus manually to make sure you're in focus. For example, if you're shooting a portrait and you use autofocus, more often than not, it's going to put the nose in focus, mm -hmm. not the eyes, and you have to have the eyes in focus. So on autofocus, you just can't press the button halfway down and assume what you have in your subject is in focus. It doesn't work that way. You still have to apply manual focus. The third uh, uh, method of focus is primarily what's used in the Leica and older cameras if you buy a used camera prior to, or a film camera, and that's split image focusing, where in the, in the camera it will show you and your image is split, and what you do is bring it up. You find a vertical line is the easiest way, and you line that up, and it's in focus. And that is a very quick way to focus. Once you get used to it, Leica shooters can focus incredibly quickly or incredibly fast, I guess yeah. is a better way of saying it. I don't think one's, you know, altogether better than the other. <clears throat> there are situations where the the autofocus is king. Like you said, things moving quickly, you know, uh, sporting events, stuff like that. Um, uh, uh, there's times when, when uh, manual focus can be incredibly accurate, whether it's split image or electronic. Um, and then in severely low, low light situations, um, sometimes it's almost impossible to do a split image focus because it's so dark where focus peaking then can kick in and, and give you some, some, some help in some places where you, know, you may not be able to focus at all, especially if you're going for those really super That's shallow right. depth of field, where, where focus is really quit critical. You know, F8, F16, F11, 22, you know, you got, usually got a fairly wide zone to work with, but with the availability of these fast lenses now and looking for that shallow depth of field, you know, focus is really super critical on what plane of focus is in and what's out. But almost any type of focus, you, well, I'd say any type of focus except for really fast-moving objects, you really need to tweak your focus manually. You can't just hold it up, let the camera do it, and boom. Or hold it up, see the peaking lines, and shoot. You need to make sure you need to adjust your manual focus mm -hmm. on any type of focus that you mm -hmm. use. Mm -hmm. You need to adjust it manually to make sure you're tack sharp. And you just can't leave it up to your camera. Yeah, they're they're only a tool, and they're only as good as the operator. So, now which which type of focus did I miss? Did I miss one? Uh, <laughs> shooting from the hip, just guess, no. get lucky, <laughs> get oh, lucky. <laughs> the, the zone focus, where you zone focus, uh, yeah. yeah, where you read, you use the focus ring, and your aperture, and it and it's only on cameras with the with with the feet and meters on the focus ring and with an aperture ring, you can actually use what's called zone focusing where it will tell you exactly uh, the range of what's in focus. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're interested in that, I would Google that because we, can't, we don't have enough time here to yeah, explain it's, it. Yeah, it's a calculable number. If you have a 50 millimeter lens at 10 feet at F11, a certain distance is gonna be in focus with a full frame that's camera. Right. And that's a number that you can you know, I have an app on my phone that does it. It'll tell you exactly what it is. And then, you know, if you're shooting anywhere between, you know, 7 and 13 feet, everything will be in focus. You never have to focus at all. So, so the, the, the lesson of this podcast is that no matter what technique you use for focus, you should always tweak it manually, except for objects that are moving incredibly fast and it's just not practical. Is that right? I'll agree. That's it, folks. From Campbell, California, thanks for watching. See you next time.